I want to uh, make some opening remarks and that is to say that uh, for us in the Public Affairs Centre, uh, today is uh, Red Letter Day. We have with us uh, a legend in his lifetime, Mr. S. Ramanathan, former civil servant. Uh, he belongs to the 1952 batch of the IAS. And uh, it's a great honor for all of us in the Public Affairs Centre. So, a very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you very to much. The Thank you very much, sir. Uh, let me also say that I am honored and privileged to be here today. It's a really great honor for me because of my personal association with your founder, Dr. Samuel Paul, has been personally, uh, been, I have been associated with him. And we have organized a large number of lectures by him. Also, at the Gospel is about branch, and he has been a good friend of mine, and we have been meeting. I also say that uh, how much I admire you also as a civil servant for the excellent work that you have done in service and continue to do today also, particularly as an academician and as an administrator. Thank you, sir. You are also a role model, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, um, I have. Uh, let, let me begin by asking you a question. You joined uh, the civil service as a direct recruit civil servant uh, as early as in 1952 uh, and uh, that was just five years after India's independence. So India was an infant and today as we stand at the threshold of completing 75 years of independence, you are looking back at uh, almost uh, uh, 70 years of public life great part of which was uh, spent by you in the civil service, serving with great distinction, not just uh, in uh, starting with the Hyderabad, old Hyderabad state, then the Mysore, Karnataka state, but more uh, important in government of India, mm -hmm. several great distinction. So when you look back, sir, uh, on this occasion of the 75th Independence Day, uh, how do you look back at India's progress in the role of the civil service? and your own role in this process. Uh, Mr. Guru Sarathi, when I joined the civil service, there are two important things that I should mention. That I should have really joined in 1950, because uh, that was the first year that I could have attempted. But uh, being a lecturer in the Stevens College, I was hoping my mind was not in joining, in joining the civil service. I wanted to go to Cambridge to do my economics PhD and be in the academic line only. But it so happened that my father was very seriously ill and therefore the thought of going to USA and leaving him alone and UK and leaving him alone here was not uh, in my mind. So I decided by the time I was already gone. So my last attempt was only left for me because uh, thinking of going to Cambridge almost, you know, it was about to materialize and my father fell in and then I joined the civil service in the very first and last attempt. So that was in 1952. The first and foremost thing that comes to my mind as we see is that in 1952, in the year of independence, apart from the very distinguished number of people who passed out in 1948, all that. So they were a generation of people who were fired with that desire to do something for the country. And they were the people who were not just illiterate people, all that. You could take any name of that time, whether in the state or in the center, who mandated in 1947. They are all great intellectuals, like Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru himself, or any other politician. You can you can think of so many, which I don't want to go. All of them were well read. Many of them were very senior advocates. Many of them had been distinguished people who were there. They were heavily dependent on us for advice. And then, at that time, Practically all the ministries were manned by the ICS when I joined. So these are the people 
who rose to the occasion. During the challenges caused by a, the partition of India, the immense migration of people, unprecedented history, the largest migration of people across the subcontinent. And the whole culture. So they were heavily dependent on the civil servants for advice. And the word corruption did not exist in the dictionary. It was, we have never heard the word corruption in those days. So it was a great honor, this. And one of the things that I noticed was that even in the districts, the first generation of politicians who either uh, got elected in the 1952 election, first general election, or 1957 election. They were all people. Though they got elected, they did not know how to serve their constituency, how to plan what to be in their own constituency, whether in terms of roads, or in terms of wells, in terms of drinking water quality, or in terms of converting kachar roads into Baka roads, all that, all weather roads. So it is we who is deputy commissioner advise them. Look, we have some knowledge about what all your villages need because we have our own Tasika built up this kind of thing. So we will tell you, we, we, we guided them that if you want to serve your community, please visit all these villages, this village is near this, and then start motivating the people. So they are heavily dependent on us on our advice. So I will say that almost even till almost 1960s, that system almost prevailed, 1965 or 67, all of that. So, in my time, the governance was very good. Corruption free, very responsive administration. Ministers were receptive to ideas and heavily dependent on them. The role has got reversed today, in a manner sense. Well, sir, uh, I think if you could uh, speak a little about your experience in government of India, because you spent a see, large, long time there. See, yeah, I'll, I'll speak about the government of India. So, I was, happened to be in 1952, it's 53, itself with Darwin, in charge of the National Extension Service. And later on, in the multi block community development block of Koppal, because Koppal had come up with some much villages and this, so it had a big, Three thalogs were one major community development program. They had done a lot of good work there, see, and that attracted the attention of G.B. Garov, see, and he said that uh, you come as deputy development commissioner. So and then uh, an opportunity came when the government of Afghanistan wanted a community development expert for framing the laws for forming the local councils. Like our panchayat system, starting from the great panchayat. See, because they had the traditional, uh, like what we call in the old days, Gaudas, the villages, as police patels, they had what is called a Ulaswadi, they had the kind man of God. See, and uh, they had a tribal system, you know, totally new tribal, and they had to, everybody had to obey the tribal chief in every village. They wanted to bring in democratic research to the there by elected bodies. So I was asked to go to Afghanistan and the United Nations picked me up. So that launched me to other set up uh, 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 with this thing, my connection with the central government. That when I came back and I was returning to India after that, on my way back to Bangalore, Bangalore I stopped at uh, to pay respects to my former mentor, Dr. Vigalio. I am the very first student of the Delhi School of Economics. Very first batch. From Delhi School? The Delhi is very first batch. I think one batch. So, he asked me, uh, how are you, Ramnathan? What is your doing in Mahmoud Sir? I said, I am on the way back from Kabul. And uh, two year term is over. I am going back to the state. So he said, what do you mean by going back to the state? I want you here. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, I want to hear. I said, sir, I am not an offer from the state government. You said, you don't worry about it. You got Chakravarti. You know Chakravarti, you heard of it, I see us. Yes, sir. Secondary community development also earlier. You are not here. 
also very much that was here. He said, please find out where he can be and I want him to be in charge of all the projects in the evening, transport and machinery ministry, all the projects. So I was designated as director of projects until the amount available. They take it to the government of India. And, and yeah, I, did, I didn't come back at all. So they spoke, checked out, they spoke to the cabinet secretary, cabinet secretary spoke to chief secretary, chief minister agreed. And I stayed back in Delhi itself. And that was, from there, it had always been, I have been connected only with projects, right till the end of my service. So, then I had to go a number of times abroad to convince the Mitsubishi people to collaborate with India in setting up the coaching shipyard. They were really elected to India at that time, did not matter to all of them. They had no standing in the world community in that sense at that time. See, anybody, even in the UK we had some relations, even at the USA we didn't have much, I think. The funny thing was that it was extremely difficult to convince the Japanese for anything. So that was one phase. The next phase was the Mr. Eden Sagal, ICS. He called me, you know, I don't know, you are in conversation for me, and you have each other projects. You have to set the International Airport Authority of India. See, you have to prepare a project report, and then you have to prepare a bill also. So, we prepared the International Airport Authority bill, and then we got it approved by Parliament, and then I moved over to the Airport Authority of India as its whole time manager director for two years. And that is where we first laid the foundation stone for the first planned domestic terminal in Chennai. Laid the foundation for the Sahara Airport, first international terminal. Then Delhi, the next first planned international terminal. All with help of the Paris Authority also. Then in Calcutta. Then, of course, my international association with the International Civil Airports Association as first vice president, Indian vice president. Uh, first Asian Vice President started, uh, first Vice President of it. Then after that, I went as additional secretary in insurance. See, where of course I uh, brought in a number of new schemes or new kind of LIC policies. And one of them was a very famous policy called money back policy. Yes, that's right. See, I said, look here, you are getting premiums. 30 years, 40 years from people without repaying anything and you are earning interest on the money. So I said, you must bring up money in policy that every five years, the person is still alive, some amount that was there, and you must refund it to him, still keeping the policy alive. And that was a landmark. Yes, it yes, was thing. landmark this thing, but money back policy that came. See? And some other schemes also, general insurance partners. We entered into collaboration with the Kenya government, you see, and Nairobi, Nairobi had joined in a joint agreement also along with other international institutions, all that. Then came my spell as a, a secretary of uh, Consent Projects. Again, projects. Projects was a establishment of six huge, 5,000, 6,000 crores, see, gas based fertilizer plants and Swiss locations. Based on Zira, yes, yes. See. And then uh, we had to select the places where the pipelines will run through, right from Zira, crossing through Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, all that, come up to UP. So we selected the places, I got the PM's approval for that. See, and we laid out these fertilizer plants also, started the need foundation for all that. The last one was as chairman of the airport of the media I came back as chairman. And that is where there we first Delhi uh, terminal you know, that you see now, separate building. Yes, yeah. That is where we started. Inaugurated the Delhi terminal building, we inaugurated the Mumbai Sahar building, which was attended by JRE Tata also. He himself was there. See? Then we inaugurated the Madras terminal also. We inaugurated the Calcutta terminal also. Then we spread across to various countries. We built the airport in Malay. We built the airport in Tripoli. 
Tại vì mình đi phổ trình xóa lại cho mình Xin ô tí thủ đi Excellent Thế là Secretary of Infrastructure Ở dân trai đồng lót và một cô sở Secretary of Infrastructure Để cảm ơn sự kết hiện Ở dân trai đồng mạng trình đồng trai 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 Railway moment and taking all these things to elsewhere. So I was in charge of the entire monitoring on this day to day basis to see that uh, uh, all these were uh, essential requirements for all these inputs requirements and there were the code for thermal plants, fertilizers, for example, all these things and all that. They're all agreed to and all that. Really so this is the. Excellent. So it is basically my 20 years was entirely on purpose. So speaking of which, uh, the uh, example you gave of uh, SNAP project here is just but one example for which you are very well known. Namely, in your entire career, you've always been recognized as somebody who is a very tough administrator, very upright. And the two things that stand out in your career, not just in the IAS but even after you retired from the IAS, one is integrity. Second is uh, your sincerity to produce results. So, looking at the current situation, sir, uh, what would your reflections be on the issues of integrity and sincerity? The problem today is sir, that there are three. The current scenario is completely changed. Scenario: There are three people who are very much in power. One is the politician. Then there are the corrupt officers. The third is the external sources, like for example, various lobbies that are there. And very, very powerful lobbies. We have very, very honest officers in our state, for example. Very upright officers who do a lot of good, but they are not allowed to function. It's a very complex situation that is developing today in administration. To talk of good governance, everybody is talking about good governance, but governance is something. So it's a mix of all kinds of things that are done. There is a turmoil in the sense that it's there. One last question, sir. Uh, so when you joined the civil service, uh, I think uh, you're, it, it's, it's uh, famously known that your father wrote a letter to you yes. saying, that, right. uh, saying that you must uphold yes, sir, impartiality, integrity, and sincerity without fear and fear. You see, uh, one question after the function that day, you know, somebody asked me, who was your father and what, how did he write this, this thing to you? You see, the point was that my father also started as private secretary to the British collector of Chandra Patil in 1912. So he had seen the whole hierarchy of British service. And in 1916, he came to the government of India after he was shifted from Calcutta and he joined in 1916 the government of India. All the people who came with him were all British advice and officers. He had sent them at the grassroots, he had sent them much. He was struck by that sense of devotion to service. They were all above board, many of them, none of them got involved in anything. They were all maintained high standards and partiality and all that. It is that which I worked with them and seen them at work. It is that this thing that you mentioned it is, that you should not do it at all. So I have maintained that always, wherever it may be. So one last thing, sir. Yes. So at this age, how do you you're in great inspiration, how do you maintain such great enthusiasm and motivation so that we can follow in your footsteps? You see, I don't know how to answer this. <laughs> I, I try to keep myself actively engaged on thing mentally. And I do a lot of uh, practical, uh, also I do a lot of uh, bhajans. I'm a religious, religious man. man. So I spent uh, two, seven to nine at night, I listen only to bhajans. Very good. Then I'm connected to so many other organizations also, environment education. I set up the That's school right. in Delhi. That's right, Poona Prakna. Poona Prakna School in Delhi also, I said that. My vice president of that also. But I have to know I'm the chief guest of the black boy stick there. So, then various other things that come up, so many people are at functions and all that. 
I went to concerts. Keep yourself busy, busy. I attend to busy concerts and all that. Wonderful, sir. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you.